Hey guys, it's Spitz here from Nelson Treehouse and Supply, and today we're going to be talking suspension bridges. So we're at another one of Nelson Treehouse and Supply's new creations. It's a new treehouse right here, and we're standing on top of a 40 foot suspension bridge into the treehouse. There's a lot of different ways to get into a treehouse. Uh, you can build a ladder, that's pretty cool. You can climb a tree, that's pretty cool. Um, sometimes you've got a staircase. Not as cool, but still pretty nice. Um, but my favorite way to get into a treehouse is straight across the suspension bridge, which we got right here. We've got a span of just over 40 feet that takes us from this deck over here, right straight up to the treehouse. So the most important component to the suspension bridge is actually the stanchion, which I got right here. Um, it's carrying uh, the handrails. It's carrying our guards, make sure you don't fall out. It's actually carrying our planks too. Um, Let's go into the shop and take a look at how to build that. So I've already gone ahead and drawn up our stanchion and it's pretty simple. You've got uh, one board on the bottom that sits on the cables and that's the only point where we have direct contact with our cable. Um, otherwise, you've got a couple uprights just holding the railing. You know, we've got some side rails here that make sure no one falls off because you really don't want to fall off this bridge. And then we've got our top cap, a couple planks. Here's our cut list. Kind of shows all the different pieces. It's pretty simple. We've got our bottom piece here. That is going to be five feet. We're going to have two little channels cut out uh, four feet apart. We have our uprights, our main uprights. I'm going to have those 39 inches long. Um, and then we have our two supports, those guys, which are about 24 inches. So as you saw, the bridge is actually made of two different materials. We've got our beautiful Western red cedar here, um, really nice stuff. It's exterior grade, so you can use it outside. Um, and we're putting this on our top rail and our side rails. That's the stuff you're going to be touching and like kind of in contact with the most. But uh, we're using just some pressure treated stuff. Um, for more of the skeleton. And so that includes our stanchion and our stair treads because you're going to be stomping on that with muddy feet. Um, so this stuff is the more appealing stuff that you want to touch. Um, this stuff's going to be kind of hidden in the background. So now that we have a cut list, we can uh, start chopping the stuff up. It's pretty straightforward except for our one. We got this guy, 70 degree angle. That's a little trickier, but it can be done. So for our stanchion, we're using this pressure treated wood. I've got gloves on because this stuff, the reason it doesn't rot is it's coated with a chemical and that chemical, I don't really want to get all over my body. So I got gloves on, but um, most of the cuts are pretty simple. Like a 10 degree bevel, that's pretty easy to set on a saw, 10 degrees. 70 degrees though, you know, this, is, this saw actually goes up to 60. Most saws don't even go up to 60, but it doesn't go up to 70. I'm going to use this wedge here to help angle my board. So when I cut that, I'm actually cutting a 70 degree, even though the saw is only set at 50. Pretty straightforward. And that's one way to get a nice clean cut at such a steep angle. So now that we've got all of our pieces cut out and everything, um, there's one more step before we can start assembling. And that is because we're using pressure treated wood here, this type of pressure treated wood is treated on the outside. Now that we've cut it, we've kind of exposed this part that is not treated. And even though that's going up another against another board, it still um, allows a channel for water to get in and could potentially rot it in the future. So to avoid that, um, we're going to treat this with a ingrain solution. So it's protected just like the outside. Make sure to wear gloves. Now this is a bottom, so this is an end grain cut. And you can really see how uh, it just soaks up that treatment here. And they're kind of like straws. The cells are actually long little pieces and they suck up that, um, this treatment, just like they'd suck up water if there was any potential water under there. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this. So now that we've got all of our wood cut up, um, I pulled my base pieces. These are the pieces that are actually going to be sitting on the cable. And uh, before we assemble everything, we've got a couple more steps. And one of them is to cut our channel in these base pieces. 
that keeps these locked in around that cable so that these can't just slide off to the side, which we don't want. Uh, to make it easy on myself and to make sure that our channel is in the same place across all of them, I've stacked them up here um, and I'm going to make those cuts all at one time and just kind of run across each board. It's ready to clamp up. So we're cutting 5 8 wide by 5 8 deep channel. Um, I've marked the center on each side where we want to have our channel and that again is four feet center to center. We're going to keep our cables four feet from each other centered on our stanchion and so I've actually marked that out here and that center line is not actually where we want to cut because that's the center of our channel. So I actually measured it over five sixteenths in either direction and so we have a five eighths gap right here and so that's what we're going to channel out. We use this straight edge. Oh maybe. And a couple of clamps. Make sure my saw doesn't wander on me. So I've got the two sides to my channels. Cut. I'm going to come back with a router and knock that middle part out. That's my puppy. So now that I got this first channel in, all I got to do is do it on the other side and then we're good to move on and actually assemble. So that's our suspension bridge breakdown. Um, we left some details out on purpose because if you're seriously considering this, you need to talk to an engineer and work with a professional. Uh, but this will give you a good idea of what that project will look like. Yeah. Woo!